to our weekly video podcast episode 5 this is Park Hall but for our first interview we go to Ballatown's Mice Tegid where we have a chat with Hannah Jones the Lakesiders press officer a 2-1 victory for Ballatown today but it's only a pre-season friendly for us they count all the time come on you know the last time we had a 2-1 against you it doesn't happen often so we we'll take it we always do <laughs> Well, in all the times that we've played on a competitive level, there's only been one victory it's, it's so just far. That, it's our Welsh Cup final. We will keep on banging on about it until we win properly in the league. But Kieran Smith loves a header, and especially against you lot for a 2-1 win. So, no, it's a very good test for us today. You know, we know what we're getting when we play you all the time. And very good performance from Bala. And won't complain about a 2-1 win. Well, it's a good test indeed because you have some European games on the horizon. Yeah, we're off to Italy next week. We're playing uh, Tre Fiori from San Marino. So we're playing, we played Kendroids and we played yourselves today. So we've had quite a few tough training sessions. The lads have been really put through the paces. And hopefully, because it's preliminary round draw, a preliminary round this time, come in round earlier. So it's the best chance we've ever had of progressing. And back to the TNS versus. Ballatown fixtures. You've already mentioned the Welsh Cup yep. final, but what games in particular, Hannah, stand out for you personally? There was a there was a game a few years ago. Not not sure of the of the year, but um, we played you off the park second half. I just remember that, and we Rob Pearson scored his first ever goal for us, and he was leaving that game to go overseas, and we we came from it gutted that we didn't win because we thought that's the closest we'd ever come in the league. So. It must have been towards the end of the season, I think it was about 2018. 2015 maybe it might have been, we'll have to check the records. But I think that one was a great game for us. But there's been, well, you have battered us a few times, but there's been very close games as well. We're one of the first seasons, first seasons in the Welsh Prem, we came very close as well. I think a lad called Chris Mason scored that day. I think we lost about 2-1. So we, we've we come so close to coming, even taking a point. When we take a point off you, we're always very happy with that. But hopefully this season we might look a win. Yeah, the season ahead, how do you fancy your chances of launching a serious challenge on the title? I think, well, we have got we go after every year thinking we've got, someone's got to topple mm. DNS. But we've had Andy Mangan has come in, Stephen Thames is looking very sharp. We've got Sean Smith has come mm. back to us. Anthony Miley from Bangor and Andrew Burns from Tamworth. And then with the current crop of lads we, we've got, I think you never know, you never know, but it might be out here. I'll tell you what, Hannah, <laughs> finally, Bala Tower must be one of the most picturesque settings in Welsh football. Well, a lot of people have said that. You can see how many ground hoppers were here today. You're just looking around us, we've got the golf club that way, we've got Berwyn, the Aran over there. We're not that far from the lake either. A lot of people say it's one of the most picturesque grounds in the UK, not just Wales. And, you know, it's sunshine in Bala for a change. That never happens. We're absolutely roasting in here. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a beautiful place to watch football in the summer. Well, Hannah, it's been great chatting today. All the very best. And, uh, the... of, of course, to you lot as well. We'd love to see TNS go through as well. All the very best in the upcoming European Games. And, sort of, for next season. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> With Champions League football on the immediate horizon... We also had a chat with Graham Kirkham and found out how you can support the Saints on the road in Macedonia. Graham, exciting times for the new Saints, a trip to Macedonia on the horizon, not only for the players and the staff, but also for fans as well. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, so we, we planned a, another away trip to uh, Macedonia, so uh, we're flying out from uh, Luton Airport on the Sunday before the before the game, the eighth. Um, have a couple of days uh, in Skopje. I uh, don't know if that's how you pronounce it, Rev, but that's how I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pronounce it for now. Um, and basically a couple of, a couple of days out there, um, and then obviously watch the game on the on the Tuesday evening. Flying back early hours on the Wednesday, 
hopefully with the, the right result behind us. It all sounds very good indeed and people of course make their own way to games across Europe but to be part of an official supporters package it means in effect that you're doing all the hard work for them. Yeah that's right, um, all, all we're doing this year is asking that uh, the supporters book their own flights and then we've got everything sorted from in terms of transfers to and from the airport, CBSI and to and from the football match itself and we've sorted out all the accommodation as well so uh, yeah any, any fans that are, are wanting to travel they just need to get in touch as soon as possible really. We've got about 15 to 20 that are, uh, well, there's about 15 booked on, another five or so that are, are interested, so it should be a, a good trip all round, hopefully. And what people want to know, of course, how much does all this cost, or are the costs changing on a daily basis as flights vary and so on and so forth? Yeah, so um, flights at this, this point in time, I checked about, uh, about an hour ago, um, and the flight return flight was about £130 um, with hand luggage. Um, and apart from that really, the, the accommodation and the transfers are going to be no more than £100 in total, so um, it's quite a, quite a cheap offer in there, somewhere in the region of £200-£250 depending on how you get your flights and, and what kind of accommodation uh, the support wants as well, but it's, um, it's a reasonable price and it's very cheap in Macedonia from what I've seen, so it all proves for a, for a good away trip. Well this sounds great indeed, not only to watch the game, a couple of days over there, a little bit of sightseeing as well. Yeah, hopefully we'll have, uh, I'm sure we'll have the weather and hopefully the right result as well to bring home to Papua. And while we've been talking, your email address has been on the screen and so people can get in touch with you via that. Perfect. We've done a number of new signing interviews in recent weeks and the latest, the final piece of Scott Rusko's transfer jigsaw is Curtis Byrne. Curtis, first of all, welcome to Park Hall. How does it feel signing for the Champions of Wales? Delighted to get it done. Um, excited for the start of the season, you know. Um, trained this morning with the lads for the first time today, and uh, you know, it's good to get back into it. And really looking forward to the season ahead. Let's look at your own career. You're from Dublin, born in Ireland, but you started your professional career with Norwich City in England. How did that come about? Um, back when I was about 14, I played for a, a club called uh, Cherry Orchard back home, the local club. Um, and I went on a number of trials when I was younger, um, to Chelsea, Celtic, etc. And uh, I just felt Norwich at the time was the best move for me. And um, you know, I signed there when I was 15, and I moved over just after uh, my 16th birthday. And you know, that's that's how that came about. And you know, it was a good learning curve for me. And then from Norwich, it was north of the English border into Scotland. Yeah, I signed for Hibs. Um, I went up there, um, really enjoyed my time in, in Edinburgh. A lovely city, great football club. Um, won a couple of trophies there with the under 19s. Um, you know, was in around the first team when they finished second or third, it was. Um, you know, I made my debut against Celtic, which was, which was always uh, a nice game, you know, for an Irishman to play against Celtic. Um, I learned a lot and, um, you know, as I said, I really enjoyed my time there. And as well as permanent deals in Scotland, you also had loan opportunities as well. So you got to see quite a bit of the full perspective of what the game is like in Scotland. Yeah, you know, um, when I was a young man in the first team at Hibs, you know, opportunities, you know, there wasn't a lot of them for me at the time. They had great strikers there. So I decided to go out on loan and... Um, you know, I went to a couple of clubs and, and, and learned the physical side of the game. And, you know, I felt I'd done well and, you know, scored a few goals and, you know, you know, it helped me improve as a player. And then from Scotland, it was back to your native island and Dundalk. Went to Dundalk, uh, had three brilliant years there. Won two leagues, um, all the cups in Ireland. Uh, played in Europe, which was, which was a great experience. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, scoring in Europe is something that I'll never forget either. And, you know, as I Dundalk was fantastic and um, you know, I'll never forget my time there. Well I was going to ask you about the goals that you scored in Europe 2, playing in the Champions League. Talk us through one of them. I scored the winner in Hadjik Split. Um, I'll never forget it. You know, they, I think did a big crowd there, 25,000. Um, we won 2-1 over there. I scored, I scored the winner. Um, it just wasn't enough on the day though. I think they went through on away goals. Um, 
but it was some experience and um, you know a really really good high in football that I mean, you know I always cherish. And then bringing us up to date, you cross the border again, this time into Northern Ireland, signing for Linfield. Yeah, I signed for Linfield um, last December. Um, it was something that I, it was the right move at the time for me. Um, you know, I had had a good six months up there. Um, you know, I scored a few goals, and um, you know, it was, didn't finish where we wanted to finish. But um, you know, that, that's football. You just have to move on, and um, you know, I find myself here. Now. England, Scotland. Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, and now you're playing in <laughs> Wales. How did you feel when TNS were interested in you? How much did you know about Welsh football? Didn't know a whole lot, but um, I knew TNS was top club. You know, um, obviously the setup here, the facilities, um, the professionalism. Um, you know, uh, just felt it was the right move, and we am really looking forward to getting started. Now, as I said, I had my first session today and really enjoyed it. You know, back into full-time football, and I just feel that will benefit me leaps and bounds. And I mentioned the full perspective of Scottish football previously because with TNS playing in the Iron Brew Cup competition again next time round, you could well find yourself perhaps playing against some very familiar opponents. Yeah, you know, if they're still at the, at the, at the clubs, you know, I might know some faces there. And the Iron Brew Cup is a good cup to win, so um, you know, hopefully you can do well this season again. And here at the New Saints, what can the fans expect from you during the coming season? Just hard work and an honest player um, that likes to take shots from everywhere. Um, so, yeah, just as, as I said, I'll, I'll do my best for the team. I'll, I'll always do that and, and hopefully I can provide some goals and assist. Well, one of your nicknames is the Volley King. Are we likely to see some spectacular goals, not only here at Park Hall, but elsewhere on the road? I hope so. Um, you know, I do like a, a shot at goal, so um, hopefully I can produce some, some good goals. Yeah. And Curtis, you, you have a girlfriend and a, a young child, so I guess that takes up most of your time away from the game itself. Absolutely. Um, you know, the last six months have been probably the best six months of my life with the little man being born. Um, you know, it's, it's changed my life completely and I love it. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much a family man outside of football, so. So I yeah, get up to it in my spare time. Well, we do have one or two golfers here at Park Hall. Are you going to join the throng? Uh, probably not. I'm not the best golfer. I just lose the head too easy. So, uh, you know, I'll just stick to uh, just some sports like table tennis and that, you know, that I'm good at. Well, Curtis, again, welcome to Park Hall. And we wish you all the very, very best as you settle in to the Champions of Wales. Thank you very much. With Europa League football, Coming to Park Hall, courtesy of Kevin Druids, we had a chat with UEFA's Mark Pittman prior to kick-off. Mark, you're here at Park Hall, not for a TNS game, but for a Kevin Druids Europa tie. Tell us what you're doing here. Yeah, back here today, Rev, for the match between Kevin Druids and uh, Lithuanian opposition's FK Trake. I'm here as the UEFA venue data coordinator which sounds quite posh and detailed. Um, it is in fact doing the live updates on the UEFA website um, and also doing the referees report after the match as well. It does, it sounds like a very posh title. Tell us in detail what sort of things exactly you'll be doing today. Um, first of all, it'll be um, to do the official team sheets. Uh, Many of you see them with the Europa League branding and the uh, various UEFA information. Um, do them pre-match and also during the game then it'll be a case of doing the updates, um, shots on goal, free kicks, corners, fouls, obviously the goals, um, which all come up live on the UEFA.com match centre. Um, and then post-match, I go and meet with the referee and the referee's observer, um, go through the match and the various bookings, yellow cards, red cards, any incidents, and that forms the actual referee's report then after the match. It all sounds very exciting. You'll be back here in two weeks' time, of course, for TNS's Champions League game. But two other Welsh clubs involved in Europe, Ballatown, Connors Key Nomads, are you there as well for their home legs? Yeah, that's right. I'll be um, in Rill with Bala next week for their match, and then I'm up with Connors Key. They're playing the next round, um, obviously with the Saints then, once again, the Champions League. And then, depends on the results then, whichever teams progress, going into the later rounds. Um, and then, we've, of course, we've got the uh, change in the sewer now, where once new Saints are eliminated from the Champions League, they'll be dropping into the Europa League. So, extra games for Welsh clubs there, by the look of it. Unless TNS win it, of course. 
There is always that. They may well reach the group stages, who knows. And talking of Welsh, Welsh teams in general, you've been involved in Welsh football for some years. How do you see the league as a whole progressing in Europe? Well, the results have improved. I mean, they're not massively going to improve to any... Obviously, no, no club has ever reached the group stages. A couple of Irish clubs have done it in the Europa League the last few years, but Welsh clubs are not quite there yet. But obviously, the results, there's no teams getting hammered every, every, every year like they used to at one point. You know, it's, it's not unusual now for teams to progress. We've got teams now who are seeded in the opening rounds, which is very rare before, which is now is a regular occurrence. You know, it's very, a lot of teams now are getting, getting victories in Europe, they're getting draws, they're progressing through one round. And they can be close against some really, really big opponents with big budgets as well. So it's a good yardstick to see where the league is, to see how teams perform in Europe against the level of opponents that they come up against. So you can definitely see there's a lot of, a lot of progression. And finally, Mark, away from Europe, the Iron Brew Cup competition, that's also been a good yardstick for the JD Welsh Premier League in terms of seeing just how far down the road we are. And I think it's also, yeah, it is definitely. And I think it's also opened a lot of people's eyes to the Welsh Premier League and the players that are in it. I mean, you look at the new Saints, Conor Rawlinson's a good example now. He's moved on to the Football League, but he's played in the Iron Brew Cup. So I'm so sure that teams have looked at the new Saints. They've seen the results they've had against more established Scottish clubs. So it's obviously shown that there is something in the league. Thank you for listening and watching this week's weekly video podcast. Next week will be a Rangers special, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, don't forget to check out our website, tnsfc.co.uk.